it's all the same, no matter time, no place. They don't understand that us kids are going to make some mistakes. So to you other kids all across the land, there's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. All right, welcome to episode number eight from chapter 14. And this episode is probably going to be the longest in our series because we're going to cover four slides. Uh, we're going to explain what a sex link trait is, and we're going to go over a number of sex link traits, including red-green color blindness, hemophilia, which is bleeder's disease, and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And, and we're going to show you how to do some Punnett square problems involving uh, sex link traits also. Okay, so what the heck is a sex link trait? Well, basically, this is a trait where the genes for that trait is found on a sex chromosome. Now, what are the sex chromosomes? Remember, they're called the X and the Y. They get letters. So over here, we got a picture of an X chromosome, and we have a picture of a Y chromosome. Notice the size difference. This is the only pair of chromosomes that are not truly homologous. Notice that the Y is not the same as the X, because if they were, we would give them the same name. Oh. Right? Now, because the X chromosome is so big, we can put some genes on it. Like, for example, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. We're going to go over that at the end of this uh, screencast. Melanoma, which is an inherited form of skin cancer. The X inactivation center. That is going to be covered in the next episode in this series. We have a type of immunodeficiency. Kind of think of AIDS, but this is an inherited form of AIDS. It's not exactly like AIDS, but it's close. It's called Severe Combined Immunodeficiency, or SCIDS for, sure, for short. Uh, you probably have seen a, a show about a boy in a bubble. They would have this. Color blindness, we're going to cover that in the screencast, and hemophilia. Now, the Y chromosome only has a few genes, and by far the most number one is this testes determining factor. Now, this is the gene that acts like a switch. It turns you from being a girl to becoming a boy, all right? Now, remember, all human beings come pre-programmed to be a girl. So remember, if you have a pair of X's, you're going to be a girl. And if you have a Y, you are going to be a guy. Oh. Now, notice both sexes have at least one X chromosome because you can only inherit an X chromosome from your mother. It's when you have the Y and you have the switch that turns you into being a guy, that's why being a, or having a Y makes you a guy, okay? Now, sex-linked traits are often called X-linked. I like the term X-linked better than sex-linked because it's telling you exactly which chromosome it's found on, okay? Now, they're going to show up in guys more often than girls because the guy only needs one allele for it to show up. A girl, if it's a recessive trait, is going to need two copies. The guy only needs one because how many X chromosomes does he have? He only has one. Okay, so let's look at some real traits that are involved in this situation, and we'll show you how to fill out a Punnett square problem that involves this trait. So let's get rid of that. All right, our first trait is going to be red-green color blindness. We're going to use blue for us. All right, now in red-green color blindness, you can't see the colors red or green very well. So once you look over here, this is a test plate that's used to see if people can see reds and greens. If you can see the green 15 in this circle, you are not red-green colorblind. If all of these circles look the same color to you, then you are uh, red-green colorblindness. So the 15 is right there, okay? This is X-linked recessive. Now, when we're doing X-linked traits, we're usually going to list them like this. The dominant allele is going to get a superscript by the X. So this would be the dominant allele. And then the recessive allele, you guessed it, is going to get a lower letter. Oh. Okay, now we're using superscripts on this because we have to tell you which sex chromosome this is going to be found on. So that's why we have to put the X there. Okay, now I want you to pay attention down here to this picture because this is typically the way that a guy is going to inherit the uh, color blindness allele. Now remember, this is X-linked recessive. It's going to show up in a guy more often than a girl. 
Okay, so here we've got a father. Remember, squares are dudes, and he's got a big C. So we're going to do this, okay? Big C equals normal vision, and then a little c equals colorblind. I'm just going to put CB for that, okay? Now, a normal, a normal vision guy happens to marry a girl that's a carrier because she's heterozygous. She doesn't have the trait, but she carries it to the next generation. And as you can see here, here is the colorblind son. He only needed one little C for that trait to show up. Now, they also have a chance of having a daughter who's a carrier, and that would be this girl right here. Okay, So half of their sons would get colorblindness, and half of their daughters would be carriers. But zero of their daughters would be colorblind. Now, the most common way that a girl would inherit the colorblind allele would be mom's a carrier, and dad has to be colorblind. And so what would happen is that female would have two little c's, okay? So a Punnett square for that would look like this, okay? So there's the colorblind male. Here's the mom that's a carrier. Let's pick a new color in here. Let's go with red. Okay, so we got XX, XY, XX, XY. So there's a 50% chance of being a girl, 50% chance of being a guy. Now let's fill in our superscripts. Okay, big C, little c, carrier. Oh, little c, little c, there's our colorblind girl. Whoa. Big C, normal guy, colorblind boy. Okay, so as you can see here, the genotype ratio here is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. The phenotype ratio is, you could say, 50% colorblind, 25% uh, carrier, 25% normal. Or you could break it up into half the females are colorblind, half the females are carriers, half the guys are normal vision, half the guys are colorblind. All right, let's move on to our next trait. Hemophilia. Hemophilia is known as the bleeder's disease. Let me get this written in here for because what happens is one of the proteins that's involved in the clotting process doesn't work. So the blood has a hard time clotting. So paper cuts are going to bleed for a long time. They're very prone to bruising. And if they have any kind of real cut that would like require stitches, it's really, really, really going to bleed. But the biggest problem is, is that any kind of like harsh movement and bumping can cause internal bleeding. And that's what really hurts hemophilia. Now, this is X-linked recessive, so our traits are going to be like this, an X with a superscript H, that's normal, and that's going to be dominant, and an X with a lowercase h superscript, that's going to be the hemophilia allele, okay? So let's show you a Punnett square of how this works, all right? So here's your Punnett square, and you have a mother who's a carrier, and you have a guy or a husband who is normal, and so as you fill in the square, now let's change my color here. Let's go to red. Okay, if you fill in your square, you'll notice that half of the female offspring are carriers. So right there is your carrier. And half of the males are going to be hemophiliacs. Okay. And then this guy here is going to be normal. All right. So really all of these sex-linked traits are going to have the same inheritance pattern. They're going to show up in males more often and they're going to inherit it from their mother because their mother was probably a carrier. And once again, just like it was in colorblindness, very, very rare for a female to be a hemophiliac. Now, do a little bit of history here. This was once known as the royal disease, okay? Most of the European governments prior to World War I were monarchies. After World War I, a lot of the monarchies kind of went out of business, okay? Now, royals used to marry only other royals. So we had a large amount of inbreeding within the royal families of Europe. They were pretty much marrying very, very close cousins. Now remember, inbreeding, which means you're, you're marrying and mating with very close relatives, typically 
first, second, maybe third cousins, but closer to that second. That leads to an increase in homozygosity. Now remember, homozygous means that your alleles are the same. So wouldn't this make sense that if you're breeding with close family members, you're going to create offspring who have the same genes because you're not getting that genetic variety. So here's a pedigree of the royal families in Europe. Okay, yeah, let's go with blue for this one. All right, so here we've got Queen Victoria of England. Remember, Victorian England gets her name from here. Okay, we know that she's a carrier. Now remember, squares are guys, circles are girls. Okay, she married uh, Prince Albert, and then they had a daughter who was a carrier, but they had a son, Leopold, who was a hemophiliac. Okay, so you can see from Leopold's line how he passes along. And as you can see from Alice's line, how she passes it along, okay? Now, what's happening here, you notice that the only affected individuals are guys. Why is that the case? Because they only need one allele to show the trait, okay? Now, the only real royal family that's in Europe, for the most part, uh, outside of, I believe, Norway, is the royal family of England. And that's these guys right along here, okay? So... Here is Prince Charles, and you'll notice he is not a hemophiliac. And there would be Princess Diana. And down here, if we would extend this, there would be Prince William, and there would be Prince Harry. And here would be Kate Middleton, and they have a child coming. Now, we don't know if this is going to be a boy or a girl yet, so we're going to put a, a diamond right there. And you'll notice we pretty much assume that uh, Kate Middleton, or, or Princess Kate, she is not a carrier, so there's no chance that this offspring will be a hemophiliac unless there's some random allele. So pretty much, since these, uh, these parts of the royal families are kind of been disbanded because they kind of went out of business after World War I, is that we do not see this in the single royal family of Europe anymore. All right. All right. We have one more trait to go over. This is called Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. And let's go back with red again. Okay. All right. Now, in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, once again, X linked recessive. So typically that's normal. And a little d would show you muscular dystrophy. Okay, now muscular dystrophy is a progressive weakening and loss of skeletal muscle. Okay, these guys eventually over time, they're not going to be able to walk, they're not going to be able to talk. And because your diaphragm is a muscle, they're not going to be able to breathe on their own. And that's typically how they will uh, pass away. Now, I want you to pay attention to this Punnett square over here. Now, they did something unique here. They used a subscript, which is very uncommon. But as you can see here, what they did is just, if you have the D, that means you carry the trait. So this would be a normal, unaffected father. Once again, mother is heterozygous. She's a carrier. Remember, heterozygous females are called a carrier. And she's going to pass it on to her son. Right there is the one who has muscular dystrophy. Now, this affects one out of 3,000 American males. And if you ever watch the Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon, he's raising money for research for for the most part, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, okay? So here's a pedigree that shows a sex-linked trait. In this case, it could be Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Here's the mother who's a carrier. So she's going to be this. Here's a boy who has it. So he's going to be that. He has a daughter who's a carrier. And here's another daughter who uh, gets married to a normal male, but she, unfortunately, has two sons that have the disease. And then over here, her sister had a daughter who's a carrier. So she could pass it on to her next generation. Okay? We're going to end this episode right here. Uh, hopefully you figured out how we can do uh, story problems that involve pedigrees where you can trace the excellent traits through a family. Like on this one you see here on your screen or on the previous screen where we had the royal families. Uh, also, you should learn how you can use a Punnett square to show how a female who was a carrier can pass that trade on to the next generation. So until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.